we have dedicated to Bobby Jameson, the newest album from Ariel Pink. Um, never heard of this artist before. Uh, as we just found out, it's one guy who, as far as I'm aware, he does most of the stuff. Um, just one dude making it big. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is an album, right? Yeah. It's it feels like it should have been released back in the seventies. Yeah. You know, late sixties, early seventies. It doesn't feel like it's from recent times. I mean, that's appropriate considering it's called dedicated to Bobby Jameson for a reason. Um, just looking him up, Bobby Jameson was a uh, folk rock during the sixties. So pff, knowing how folk rock was back then, I mean, he's described as pop rock folk and blues so i mean i've never heard of bobby jameson so neither have i it's not a name i've heard of. although at one point he was the opening live act for the beach boys jan and dean and chubby checker uh, presumably has some kind of uh reputation also declined an offer to join the monkeys fair enough worked with musicians such as frank zappa and members of crazy horse um yeah, so it's one of those cases of if you don't know him or his stuff directly, you'd be aware of him tangentially. Um, it says years active, 63 to 85. Yeah, this is around for quite a while then. Yeah, but he died two years ago. So some. So not around now. Did. Yeah, but my point is that he retired early. He was only, he was only 60 when. Oh. Not oh, 70 even, when he died. That's, that's pretty old. I mean, not super old, but it's older than a lot of people get. Eh, but anyway, um, yeah, this, uh, this album is very much a sort of callback to the 60s style. Um, certain songs, like um, Dream Date Narcissist. Just a good name for a song. I, I played that to my dad. Because I was sort of like, am I hearing this right? Or, you know, is it just my youthful brain? And that's why I'm hearing it like this. I played it to my dad, you know, as a sort of, what does this remind you of? And he was sort of like, strawberry alarm clock. And it was a, okay, it's not just me. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, strawberry alarm clock are famous for incense and peppermints. I say one thing it does make me think of actually is um as an album as a whole even is Boys Don't Cry by the Cure. There's a kind of airy kind of pop sound to it. It makes me think a little bit of that. Some of the songs maybe, but not really as a whole. I can hear it now and then. So. I mean, to be fair, you know the Cure far better than I do. So this is most likely true. Yes. No, there's no most likely about it. You definitely know them better than me. <laughs> fair enough. Um. I mean, some of the bits sort of sound like early Genesis, which is the best Genesis. And no, I'm not trolling. I can't stand Phil Collins' Genesis. So to do the fact you can't stand Phil Collins? No, it's because Genesis went all... Well, you know how much I like prog. Yeah. Genesis stopped being prog. Sort of like Peter Gabriel left and the album after... Um, it was sort of like Trick of the Tail was the last kind of prog album they did. And then after that, they just did pop rock. And it sucked. I don't care if this makes me a hipster. Phil Collins can go die in a ditch. You know, I always wonder what ditches ever did to people. What? <laughs> I think it's like, what are the ditches feelings? I mean, they can't just, you know, just, they're going to just sit back and let themselves be filled up with corpses. Well, as long as the bodies aren't on fire. What if the ditch is on fire, though? Well, that's the ditch's choice. You can't, you can't just tell a ditch not to be on fire, you know. That's racist. <laughs> what are we even on? This is what this album did to my brain. <laughs> um, I mean, it kind of went all across... It ran the gamut of stars, and that's probably to emulate the style of Bobby Jameson. I mean, he went from the 60s to the 80s and this album kind of feels like it's going from the 60s to the 80s. Yeah, it does tend to uh, move around quite a bit. 
I mean, you've got some bits that feel a bit Bee Gees-esque in design. You know, that 70s disco style. Um, and you've got things like um, Time to Live, which has this strange video killed the radio rhythm and vocal effect to it. It's kind of difficult to pin down. It is somewhat bizarre. I think it's our album is somewhat bizarre. Which makes it interesting. So. Yeah. It, it is interesting to note that this is designed as a concept album. Um, the narrative being the rebirth of the protagonist into life out of death. Okay, I would never have got that from what I'm hearing. <laughs> well, but this is just based on stuff I read up on it. Um, I mean, as I say, that whole concept is helped by the fact that um, there is no one strict sound going on. You know, it develops, it evolves, it changes. It's it's certainly an interesting listen. Yeah, did you might and tell this kind of album kind of weirded my brain out. I don't even know exactly what to say about. <laughs> well, it's certainly creative. No, I get about that. It's creative and it's definitely different. I can't think of anything quite like it. At least not recently. Mm. Um, I will say of all the songs, there is a song that I would cut. Oh. Acting. It kind of acting kind of feels like they're extending the album past its natural end. It doesn't really go anywhere. It just feels a bit meandering. It even has a um, oh, what a seventies. It's definitely looks kind of seventies to me. Mm. But yeah, I I think if if it just ended with "Do Yourself a Favor," then that would bump my score up a bit. Um, I mean, overall score, I'd say three point five out of five. Um. I probably always need to go with 2.5 simply because that's right in the middle and I don't even know what to think about this album really. <laughs> Fair enough. Do my fi- fine job as a uh, reviewer here thinking, it's a thing? <laughs> I mean, I, I, that kind of worries me considering we, uh, considering what albums we are going to be reviewing. I mean, hell, we've got Primus on the ducket. This is true. If you're if you're weirding out on this, how are you gonna be with Primus? I think Primus is very much its own kind of thing, though. Even so, I mean that album is based on a children's book about rainbow hunting goblins. Um, but none the more for that. I yeah, this it didn't weird me out, but I just found it a very interesting take on how you can variate, how you can just completely run the gamut of what genres to cover. Well, this is because the genres are very it's, very... it's quite defined in its own genres. It varies, but it's still kind of within that kind of psychedelic pop kind of style. Mm. Psycho-funk or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Funk, maybe, but psycho... Um, psycho-social? Psycho-social? I... I mean, it's described as hypnagogic pop and chill wave. And I'm just sort of like, it's psychedelia! Why do we need another fucking genre? We've already got 180 billion of them. We don't need any more! Psychedelia is enough! The other genres we have is obscene, to be fair. I mean, it's psychedelia and disco if we want to go really elaborate. But you don't need to make any more. Just fuck off. We've got enough genres. I think there's more genres in music than there are stars in the universe. I, it just, I don't get why they feel the need to make so many different genres. Every single time someone thinks, I don't know what to describe this as, so they then create something new to describe it as. And you know what we're putting this under? The rock section. So, whatever. <laughs> this is totally post avant garde noise. <laughs> the hell of it is, that's probably a genre. Well, the noise is a genre. Yeah. Post is a suffix or prefix that could, well, prefix that can be used for genres. And avant garde is a. It's a genre. Yeah, I'm glad it's a genre in itself. It's not even a genre, it's just a descriptor. Yeah, it makes... It's not really a genre in itself. No, it is a genre in itself. Avant-garde somehow manages to be classified as a genre in its own right. It makes no sense. The whole point of avant-garde is... Oh, who even knows? It's... It completely contradicts... Welcome to a genre cast. 
where we discuss how there's far too many genres. <laughs> but anyway, um, if anyone feels the need to go, well, actually, the definition of hypnogogic is, I don't care. You can talk till the cows come home about the different definitions of particular subgenres. I will not care because it is entirely unnecessary. The number of genres is too damn high. Exactly. Yeah, we probably should stop talking about genres. So c- catch up with us later for our 13 hour long talk about genres coming soon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you're into sort of psychedelia, disco, basically, if you like artists that mix it up with not sticking to one thing, then this is an album that will appeal to you. I'm kind of confused as to how Pierce can be so weirded out by this album, but whatever. So you weirded out as more just dumbfounded as to what to say. Fair enough. That's a case of not understanding or being able to con- yeah, kind of word anymore. Uh, <laughs> it's not even the case of not being contemplating music, it's more just not being able to put those thoughts into actual physical sentences to describe what I'm hearing. Oh dear. Anyway, next album. 